Delay gratification is one of the subjects I wanted to touch upon this week. I remember as a little kid, I was never taught the power of delayed gratification and also the power of habit. What I mean by this is uh, when I was younger, if I ever needed something, I always had my parents to lean on. If I needed uh, books for school, if I, if I wanted this chocolate bar, uh, the whenever I asked the question, the, the answer will always be yes. Uh, I find that that didn't help in my journey to controlling this power of delayed gratification. I'm not saying that uh, it was their my parents' fault for bringing this upon me, as I know they only want what's best for me. In the beginning stages of my fitness journey, I had to learn early on that this power of delayed gratification would be monumental in my progression. Some examples. Uh, when I first started, I didn't have any food regimen that I followed. I've only thought about the work workout aspect with no sense of direction with my nutrition. I would eat junk food, not even think about what type of food I'm eating throughout the day. And after every workout, I felt that I deserved this bag of chips. I deserve this type of food. I deserve to eat whatever I wanted to eat and had no clue on how what I was putting into my body. As I grew into some sort of regimen and learning more about what I put in my body and how to train, I become I became more aware of what what I was putting into my body. And awareness is really a key point in how you s- schedule your regimen. Uh, your regimen could be working out once a week, twice a week, um, every other day, or however frequent uh, you would like. But I'd say that frequency is always better. Say for a marathon runner, a marathon runner would need months of training, getting mileage in, in order to perform the best that they can. I know this from experience as I've ran two marathons in my lifetime. Uh, My first marathon, I ran uh, with training by myself and was running maybe about 15 to 25 miles a week with long runs uh, each week with my highest long run I believe was 15 miles at the time and I thought that that amount was uh, was good enough uh, because I figured that if I could run for 15 miles that it would translate uh, into the into the race onto race day. I quickly I quickly learned that it wasn't the case, and find my I found myself cramping up towards the last two miles of my first marathon. I didn't train running per se and didn't sign up for my next race up until uh, three years after my first marathon. And this time I I really wanted to be serious about how I trained and really wanted to finish how I wanted to finish. So I joined the race club with my sister, Pasadena Pacers, and really learned on the importance of 
running for mileage and running running to get used to that type of working out in the end of my second marathon I finished the way I wanted and was really proud of what I what have I what I accomplished there's a big reason why in sports when we see teams win um, they're overcome with with joy and and feeling of accomplishment because they they are the true warriors of delayed gratification they know working hard will eventually get you to to that championship to that trophy and it's amazing to watch because you know that years and years of work have have really pushed these athletes to their limits and winning the trophy just shows the amount of dedication to their craft. I was lifting today at 195 and I felt felt pretty good today and I still feel feel that small chest strain in my body but I I backed off here I backed off at 225 and stretch the rest of the stretch of the rest of my workout one thing I wanted to increase in the next couple of weeks is my hip mobility I feel that in my in my squats that my my hips are not opening up as much at the at the bottom of the hole and definitely need to get some stretching out in uh, in my body um, I've, I've been watching some videos on how to unlock unlock the hip and really want to be more flexible in in my regimen the deadlifts are doing great and I don't have any any problems with with the deadlifts uh, this week I have noticed on my deadlifts that my toes seem to point up a little bit at the top of each deadlift I'm not sure if that I'm not sure if that really impedes um, the form as much but I definitely uh, will look into look into that to see if that is bad uh, so the pulling pulling the deadlifts are really I'm getting more comfortable with it at the 315 is really comf comfy in a sense that uh, it feels like it's easy to uh, get off get get it off the ground so I'm really enjoying that that I'm able to to pull with a lot more volume this week around it's a I think it's a, it's a great thing yeah, so here's my 315 and I'm really proud of the direction I'm going in right now because uh, at the start of this journey I wasn't able to rep out five five and wouldn't be able to do anything more than five without losing uh, losing grip so my grip strength has definitely increased with with uh, with the type of regimen that I'm doing uh, right now it was a great thing I, th I felt like the as I'm setting it down there is some sort of rounding of the back I don't really feel any um, tightness or I don't feel any any pain so I think I'll continue just lifting like that maybe be more mindful towards the end of my towards the end of my lifts uh, going forward I did try out 405 this time and sadly 
it didn't come off the ground. I uh, just didn't want to risk it uh, knowing that I had my chest already and didn't want my back to give out. Uh, I thought I was being a little gutsy trying to <laughs> trying to do it again, but uh, I didn't include it here uh, just for your pleasure, viewing pleasure. Uh, look at my runs today. I definitely increased on the frequency here and just keep the ball rolling uh, from this point forward. Thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one.